Welcome to Potentials. This is Lija, and today we have Frank Chili once again and Andrea Martin once again. Thank you for coming on today, guys. I really appreciate it. Hello. It's a joy and an honor. Thank you. And for me as well. Um, we're going to be talking about Hatan today, the record keeper of the galaxy. And I'm um, going to go into a little bit more detail on that. So Frank has a lot to share with us. Thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, I believe uh, Andrea has a, a message or um, oh, yes. to, not in some information that's going to be pertinent to Hatan. Did I, I, let, let's start with that. Yes, yes. He, he, did, he wasn't able to uh, meet with us today. So when in the, he gave us a message instead. It was very, very nice of him. <laughs> and I know he came through for you, Linda, as well, even I. Yes. Friend. Yeah, the other day. So I, what I really like um, about this message was his um, sort of parting words and that um, he said that we no longer have to be actors in this um, this theatrical play that's going on. Um, and I just thought that really, you know, set that meant <laughs> that set the stage. Um, but of course, he says, um, so warm greetings, he says, um, had Tom to all living on planet earth. I wish to commend you and your journey into truth and understanding. It has been a long fight. Fight is a terrible word, but that is what it was. And now you have won. Your victory is your destiny and it is well-deserved. He says, I honor that. You are the way showers and much will unfurl before you. And he needs talking about all the different things that we're gonna be experiencing, I think quite shortly. Um, the technology, the new healing ways, the, the um, expansion of spirituality is a whole new understanding of our place in the universe, you know, et cetera, basically. Um, he says, the process of action and thought are changing. So there's gonna be a merging, he was talking about the merging between um, technology and science and spirituality and just humanitarianism and compassion and a unity between all of the beings on earth and of course the non-human beings, the plants, everything is going to be seen um, in a different way. So he says, there is much remediation to be done, but this will happen quickly. And he said, he's, he's cute. He's like, they, I love when they do these things. He says, it'll happen quickly in the blink of an eye. <laughs> Whenever they have these sayings. And so, um, so he says, you will not recognize your world as it becomes what it really is instead of what it had been deluded to be. This is less of a transformation than a recovery from it having been hidden. So he's, he showed me this picture of like a lifting um, a drape from a painting. So what he was saying was that the, um, the earth itself has basically been, you know, a mirage. It's, it wasn't the real earth. It wasn't what it was supposed to be. And he says that whole veil is being lifted. He said, you had lived in a theatrical show. You found yourself actors in a tragedy. You did not you know you were in. So this theater is now closed and you are released, liberated, he said, let go from your acting duties. And he said, blessings and enjoy the journey. Um, and he said, new dawn, new paths, forge your future. So that was that was his message for us. Thank you, Brother Hatan. That's beautiful. Thank you so much, Andrea. You're welcome. It's always timely. It's always timely. Oh, they never fail. They never, <laughs> they never. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much. That was beautiful. Sometimes it's a little harrowing. You're not sure they're going to come through. And then, but he was one of the few, as I said, um, I don't allow them to channel on me, um, but he actually attempted that. So I was just like, no, we're going yeah. to just. <laughs> That's good. Well, I'm glad he's over lighting us. And I'm sure we're on the big screen today. Oh, definitely. Oh, you know, that's yeah. what <laughs> well, Linda, can we begin? Yes. Yes. We All right. Can. If you want to show the uh, image of Hatan, and I'll do a little bit of a background uh, uh, of what it is we're going to be discussing. Okay. And there is uh, Hatan as captured by Sly Winkler. This was a woman that had worked at Disney Studios for 35 years. Uh, she was an artist for Disney, and then she uh, uh, retired and uh, moved to the high desert area of Yucca Valley and became part of a Buddhist uh, community. And these beings would come to her at mornings, uh, first morning's light through a window by her door and project their image in full 3D inside of her cottage so she could paint their likeness. But when she painted Hatan, he wanted her to know that he wanted to be uh, uh, like over lighting Mount Shasta and with the star above his right shoulder. And uh, the significance of that will be revealed in, in uh during the course of this discussion. Um, I mentioned to you in the last time we got together that Simon, my spiritual brother and I would go out and visit Gabriel Green in Yucca Valley. 
And he's the one who introduced us to Sly Winkler. And he was also a contactee himself. He was a photographer for the Giant Rock UFO conventions that were started by George Van Tassel out there. And other contactees would reach out to um, Gabriel and share information with him regarding their own contacts with visitors that look like us. So this one individual, uh, his name was uh, Bob Bernal, and I believe you have a photograph of him that you could show, Linda? Yes, I'm sorry. That That's way. right, no problem. And that's a picture of Bob Bernald. He was a ham radio operator, and he would uh, have uh, connections all around uh, the planet Earth with other ham radio operators. And then he started getting a message from a being who claimed to be uh, a visitor from the planet Corendor. And he started communicating through his ham radio uh, equipment set. And then after that, he fine-tuned his equipment so he could get a better connection with them. And then they started appearing to him. And he started a series of contacts and he was sharing all this information with Gabriel Green uh, prior to his book uh, being released. And uh, I think you have an image of his book, Linda, if you could show that first image. Go. That's it. OK, that's the uh, first book that he wrote based upon his experiences with the visitors from Corendor, and he was meeting with them and he looked just like us. And he had some assistance with this book the, being published and being uh, edited by Gabriel Green and also by Colonel Wendell Stevens. That name would be uh, familiar with a lot of people. Colonel Wendell Stevens was very interactive in bringing forth a lot of information regarding contactees and crash retrievals and um, uh, military uh, uh, happenings with the UFOs that were being kept secret. Well, uh, Gabe had asked Bob if it's possible to have his star visitor friend take photographs of another world. And uh, his friend told him, yes. He said, that is possible. He said, we want you to procure a 35 millimeter camera and several rolls of film, and we will take photographs and give you the photographs. So uh, Bob got the 35 millimeter camera and several rolls of film, gave it to his friend and his friend left. And he returned probably several weeks later with the uh, camera, returning the camera and giving him the rolls of film, which he had developed. And Gabe had a set of the photographs that were developed that were taken. And this uh, visitor from Crendor said he wanted to share photographs taken on a planet that's called Terminus Atan. It's Atan's home planet. And it's very similar to Earth, and Hatan was a record keeper or is the record keeper of the galaxy. So they wanted Bob to have photographs of Hatan's home planet and of the work that he does there at his uh, at uh, Terminus Hatan. So uh, what I did was I took down notes based upon seeing these photographs, and this was some time ago. But I do have quite a few details that I want to share with you folks. So you could leave that image up and. Oh, sorry. Or you, could, or you could put the second image up of uh, I was going to uh, put uh, that. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is a beautiful image of one of the uh, Corendoran uh, uh, space visitors' craft, and that's a, a picture of Bob standing on the deck of it, looking down upon the planet Earth, and that cover photo or that cover image was used on Gabriel Green's, one of his newsletters. He had a uh, uh, an association called uh, Amalgamated Flying Saucer Clubs of America. And he used this image on one of his covers of his newsletter, which I always thought was remarkable. Yeah, but uh, it really is, it's really stunning. It's almost like you're standing there with him, you know? If, if uh, people did a, a, a screen blow up of that, it's just, there's a lot of detail in it. But anyway, um, this is what I recall seeing in the images, okay? The first photo showed an image of the Earth from the craft looking down as it passed over the South Pole. The view taken of the heavens from the South Pole was really quite an image of the night sky. 
And again, all these 35 millimeter photographs were all in vivid color. And I'm telling you, the colors were just absolutely uh, extraordinary. The second image depicted the craft's destination was towards the constellation of Vela, which would pass the edge of the constellation of the chameleon, proceed upwards and approach the constellation known as Carina. The craft passed between that and the constellation of Volans, making for the star, the star called B. Carina, which was also known to astronomers as Mia Placidus, Mia Placidus, P-L-A-C-I-D-U-S. Multiple photos were part of the uh, number two photo in the series as they were passing through it. And again, these were extraordinary photographs of the constellation and of the stars as they were going out towards Terminus Satan. The third uh, showed the craft passing through the constellation of Carina, and it passes on, on uh, the side of Ella Carina Nebula. And there's mul multiple photos of this. And they were all extraordinary. The fourth photo showed the craft moving faster than light, headed towards the heart of the Vela constellation, and the planet Terminus Satan is designated on the star chart. It's actually called P Vela, V E L A. That's how astronomers would know Terminus Satan, but it's it's a Tantone planet, and it's known under the name P Dash Vela, V E L A. It's the, it is a faint star, a minus one fourteenth magnitude. The Vela system, which Satan calls home, is said to be the largest cloud of nebula or ionized hydrogen gas anywhere in a galaxy. This area is also known to astronomers as the Gum Nebula. Photos two through four really uh, defy adequate description. They were beautiful, stunning, and beyond words. And there were multiple photos of that set. The fifth photo showed Terminus Satan, about some 1,500 light years from Earth, and the craft comes over the north polar region of the planet, and it depicts an area of snow and a light scattering of trees, pristine looking lakes and mountain ranges. And there are multiple photos of uh, photograph five. Photograph six was the craft flies over a desert like area and prepares to land next to what is to be what is said to be the Galactic Archives building. Seventh, the craft lands right next to Hatan's own spacecraft, which was silver colored and uh, beautiful. It was probably maybe uh, 100 feet in diameter with a dome top and setting on three uh, support posts. The eighth photograph uh, showed the inside of the corridor, or the second level of the structure. The photo depicts geometrical shapes that are inlaid in the floor and the corridors. They were actually beautiful geometric shapes and they were all inlaid and the floor looked to be like marble. The, the ninth photograph was a photo of the galactic building showing a room where there was a control panel panel with a blank, I'm sorry, with a bank of monitors that could view and zoom in on any aspect of the galaxy. There were thousands of monitors in this room. There's a device in there that is operated by sitting on a central access deck and solicits the, the information from the screen that one desires. The results of the inquiry may be obtained in any manner that is desired, but is usually an instant telepathic relay to the mind. It is said that this is the Archive Central and the Central Research and History computers that are on eight levels of these corridors that are, that are, uh, are contained in the uh, archive complex. Each of these layers is said to be interconnected by shafts that are 20 miles deep and that there are connecting bridges between the shafts. You cannot, cannot imagine the size of the screening monitor room photo. There were multiple photos of this room and images of these shafts that are 20 miles deep. It's absolutely remarkable. The 10th photo showed a male, a black male, a space brother who was working in the galactic records room where all data is stored in what looked like stainless steel cylinders that were recessed into the floor of a gigantic room. The floor of the room appeared to be of stainless steel type color. Inside the records room were uh, partial columns of blue light almost seeming like shields to protect individual columns of records stored in the ground. All amazing, the male space being wore a one-piece blue colored outfit. And again, his suit was incorporating the boots and the suit were all one piece and it was blue. The 11th photo showed uh, six force field generators that controlled the environment of the planet Terminus Satan 
and can be programmed to create any type of weather or climate, climate desired. They can also provide a force field that reaches some 2,000 miles out from the planet. This force field can detect the approach of any craft as well as provide an impenetrable shield should, should any uh, approaching craft be hostile or for any reason. And this force field could cause Satan's home planet to disappear visually or from the detection of instruments from other spacecraft. This is also to protect the records there so nobody could ever alter the records of the galaxy. And these uh, force fields were uh, unbelievable. They were uh, like spiral uh, columns of, of uh, like fiber optics that were purple. They were just so incredible. Just they're still burned into my mind. Um, photo 12 depicted Hatan, Hatan's home on an island some 40 miles from the Galactic Archive Center. There was a forest on the island with a gleaming white structure nestled on it. Only structure on this small planet were Hatan's residence and the immense Galactic Record Gallery. The 13th photo showed the inside of Hatan's home. Its, its interior is all white and gold in appearance and very comfortable, yet had had very futuristic furnishings to it. There was no direct photo of Hatan himself, but there was a photo inside of his home of a female space being who lived with Hatan. Um, the floor was a copper color, the walls were white, and the light seemed to be indirect, but very soothing. In the living room was an astounding piece of artwork of a solar cross in dazzling red rubies. Do you want to show that that image of the solar uh, cross? Yes. Is this it? Nope. No. I, don't I don't think I have that one. It's the, uh, the one of the Ankh. The, oh, the Ankh. The yeah. Ankh, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. That's right. Take your time. No problem. There we go. They called this, the Brotherhood calls this the Solar Cross. Egyptian called it the Ankh. And he had uh, created one of these in his uh, in his home, and it was made with uh, rubies on a gold background with a magnificent frame. Hanging from the ceiling were strands of what appeared to be fluorescent gold filament, and various diam diameters of gold were just hanging down in isolated strands. They almost looked like streams, and they almost moved, moved like mobiles, like the air would cause them to like move in spirals, but it looked like they were liquid. There were pieces of sculptor, uh, sculpture that Hatan had created, which were also in view in the photograph. Also, there was um, a main area that had a view screen and a monitor. Said, it's said to be similar to the ones that are in the time vault to be open when Earth, uh, when the Earth time is released. So there are archives all over this planet that have uh, uh, repositories of information that are going to be open to the public when the time is right. And one of those monitors were in Hatan's home. The female who uh, was in the photograph and uh, the fellow that was in the storage area were both akin to us in appearance, okay? Both wore one-piece suits, which incorporated both the shoes and boots into the outfits. The woman had long strawberry blonde hair and wore a silver colored suit. And uh, there, again, there was no photograph of Hatan there, but uh, the photograph of the woman who was his uh, 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 his accompaniment and the uh, worker who worked in the uh, the records room were the only two photographs of individuals. And they looked just like us. They could have passed uh, on, on uh, Earth and nobody would know the difference. That basically ended the uh, 35 millimeter photos that were supplied to the star visitor from Karender uh, who had visited with Hatan. And... I had discussed these uh, photographs with a friend of mine. His name was Commander Graham Bethune. And uh, Graham had uh, a top secret, um, a top secret um, VIP um, clearance for the Navy. He would fly George Marshall to two crash retrievals. Uh, the Navy would fly General Marshall, who was a five-star general, along with other Navy personnel, and uh, scientists, British and American scientists, 
to two crash tr retrieval sites that he flew them to. One was in Reykjavik in Iceland, and one was in Utah. And uh, both times they recovered a 100-foot disc and brought it back to the States. Well, uh, Commander Bethune had his own sighting of a craft that was written up in Project Blue Book of a disc that was 300 feet in diameter that he encountered flying over the uh, North Atlantic. And after Graham got out of the service, he became very interested in the paranormal. He became very interested in uh, Valiant Thor and the story of uh, that uh, Dr. Strange's head of his meetings with Valiant Thor. And he always believed that there was a brotherhood that existed in the cosmos that wanted to interact with us. When I told Graham the story of these photographs, he said, Frank, I have to have a set of those photographs. I said, Graham, I don't know anyone that had a set of those photographs other than Graham or other than uh, Gabriel Green. And I said to him, I said, Gabriel's uh, estate was sold when he when he had passed away. And all that is in storage and archives somewhere. So Commander Bethune said, Frank, I got to find a series of those photos. So a couple of weeks later, he called me. He said, Frank, I found a woman in Utah that had been in contact with Bob Renald, who had a series of those photographs. And he contacted her and, and she said she was willing to give him the photographs. But she said she wanted to make sure that he was the type of person that she could entrust these to. So she asked him if he would come out and visit with her for a period of several days so she could talk to him. And he flew out to Utah. He met with her at her home. He stayed in that area for three days. At the end of three days, he said, I feel that you're a dedicated, sincere, and genuine individual. And she said, uh, I'm going to entrust this set of photographs to you. So Graham got the photos. He came back to New Jersey, contacted me, said, Frank, we've got to get together. He said, I want you to tell me if these are the same photos that you had seen. And if you want, Linda, you could put back that photograph of uh, Hatan, you know, over Mount Shasta. Excellent. So um, well, I met Graham for lunch, and he said, Frank, these are the photographs that I'd been given by this woman in Utah. And I think she was either Swedish or Nor Norwegian, and she was up in years. So she was happy to give these to Graham. As soon as I saw the set of photographs, I knew they were the exact set that I'd seen with Gabriel Green. And I said, Graham, these are the real deal. They're the actual photographs or a copy of the set of photographs that I had seen. And he was so happy to receive them. And he said, these really are extraordinary photographs. So um, I think I mentioned to you, uh, Roberta Herzog, who was the reader of the Akashic Records that I knew, and uh, another friend by the name of Cowley. And I'm going to do a story on her in a future uh, get together. She had uh, uh, experiences in the inner earth, and she had gone through the monastery of the Seven Rays uh, in uh, Peru. And uh, I asked Commander Bethune, if he'd be willing to show those photos to Roberta and Cowley, I wanted their appraisal of these photographs. So he approved, he agreed to get together with us. We got together at uh, uh, Cowley's house. She lived in Indian Mills in uh, New Jersey. And we went there and spent the afternoon. And when Roberta and Cowley saw the photographs, they said, without a doubt, these are off world planets, planet photographs. They were not taken here. They were taken elsewhere. And they both told me that they felt that they were 100% accurate and valid. So I got the validation of both Roberta and Kelly, Kelly that they were indeed incredible photographs. And Graham was so happy to have a set of them. And as I mentioned to you that uh, the records that uh, are kept at uh, Terminus Hattan, the uh, galactic center there, that also in Hattan's home, there was a monitor that could view into the history of the past of a planet's history and said that there are going to be archives that are going to be revealed to the uh, public in the future. Well, the image that he has overlighting Shasta is because Shasta has one of those record rooms where people will be able to access the hidden archives of the true history of the planet. And Kelly and Roberta both told me that in these archives, there are these tablets. Some of them are four to five feet tall. Some of them are, are emerald in color. And they both told me that you stand in front of the tablet maybe eight or 10 feet away from it, and your energy field activates the tablet and it projects a holographic image of a portion of that planet's history 
so that you could view it and actually walk around the images because it's displayed holographically. That's going to all be made available to us at some point in the future. That's amazing. <laughs> so that's why Hatan is shown uh, above uh, uh, Mount Shasta and with that star over his shoulder, uh, because all those records are going to be revealed in the future and people will be able to see for themselves the true history of our planet without any distortion because those records are taken right from Akasha and they are put into these tablets so people will be able to see them in the future. So we have some remarkable things that are going to be revelations to us in the future. That's incredible. Thank you. It's a joy to be able to share it. Thank you for letting me tell that story. I know there was a lot of details in some of those photos, but uh, I wanted to record them because, uh, you know, as time uh, expires, uh, you know, memory fails us. So I wanted to record that so that I'll have that for future reference. But all these things will be given to us, I'm sure, in abundance. I'm, I'm excited. I can't wait. <laughs> yes. I was gonna say, were, there, were there any copies made of those photos? There must have been several copies made, but I was not aware of anybody else who had copies of them. Uh, the original set that I saw that uh, Gabriel had, and also Bob Bernard had his own set, and this woman in Utah, I don't know how she had gotten a copy of those photographs, but they were indeed real. They were, uh, the size I think was uh, probably three by five or maybe four by five. And the detail them was extraordinary. They never published them anywhere in a book or anything? No, I've never seen them published in a book. If you come across an entry or any insight where we could find a set of them, it would be wonderful to see them once again. Yeah. So did the, the um, people who had them all pass away? Uh, Gabriel Green had a set of them, and it went into his uh, estate when it was sold. Now, I have a contact, a friend who was married to one of the Mellon family members, the Mellon uh yeah. Wealth of Philadelphia, they're the ones that, uh, they bankrolled a lot of property in Philadelphia, a lot of museums and a lot of uh, buildings. And yeah. a friend of a friend of mine, his name is James, his friend bought the Gabriel Green estate when it went up for auction. And it's all intact. It's all in one piece. And he passed away. And his wife has it in a storage unit somewhere, I think, either in Arizona or New Mexico. And she's not friendly towards James at all. But James has been trying to work with her son, who's friendly towards James, about trying to get us to have access to Gabriel Green's estate because he had incredible manuscripts there. He had uh, an incredible book collection. He had uh, the footage of all the giant rock uh, UFO conventions that were started by George Van Tassel. His house was like a living museum. It really was. Wow. wow. Well, that's one thing we all have to work on, trying to get those photos. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. But if you come across any insights, Andrea or Linda, please let me know. And uh, it'd be wonderful to share them with the world because they really are extraordinary. When you see them, you see uh, if somebody tried to forge these, they'd have to go through a tremendous expense because there seem to be no uh, special effects in any of the photos. They all seem to be real and taken right at that point of uh, origin when the camera was uh, pointing at these things and, and showing them. And these force uh, generators, these force field generators, they looked incredible. When I would look at the photographs and I told Robert and Kelly, you almost burn your eyes looking at them because they're so potent or so profound, but not in a, uh, in a harsh way, but just in a, in a pleasing way to know that you're looking at something very, very special. And you could almost feel the effect of the uh, force field emanating from these generators to protect uh, Hatan's home planet. And again, it looked like fiber optics that were inside the, these coiled um, uh, almost looked like neon. It almost looked like neon, but there was movement inside of it, and they were uh, the most beautiful shade of uh, purple. Just really beautiful. Wow. Did, did this they was, post, or were they, or were they just lit up? Well, again, these, they were lit up, but they seemed to be movement inside of the uh, inside of the um, structure of these tubes. And again, this is before fiber optics was known to anybody, and this was before LED lighting. You know. So I had never how seen anything like this before. This was in the 80s. This was oh, in the 80s. 80s. Yes, it was in the 80s. So it's just really, really remarkable. And and hopefully, again, at some point, they'll be, they'll be uh, coming to the public's attention. But I wanted to share that story about Hatan and his uh, portrait that Salai had captured and the photographs, which are really extraordinary. So, you know, there's a lot more treasures that are going to be uh, enjoyed by all of us. 
when the time is right. I, I hope soon. I'm being impatient, but <laughs> okay, I'm, we're going to try to track down those photos for sure. Yes, we got. You we gotta You've got some good. You got some good sources upstairs, uh, Andrew. I think you may be successful. <laughs> yes. Or Hatan, Hatan may guide you. He may guide That's, you to where we can get a set. That's, That's true. What I was they, we, they respond. Uh, a lot of times, people respond to a university. You know, they see a university email or something. They respond to that. So. Yes. And Andrea, tell us of your own connection with Corendor, because you were mentioning that to me. Yes, um, it was sort of a fluke, actually. So we're going to list the um, the Terracor um, website that has all the yeah. phenomenal. I, I haven't been able to stop reading them for like the past couple of days. Yes. Um, really, really amazing stuff. Um, so, yeah, it, they do have a base. I know they have a base in California, but they have a main base in Massachusetts. Yes. The Corendi. Um, So this summer, uh, we, we were look, doing some uh, remote viewing. And um, we're sitting outside and it's, you know, at night this, and I'm looking up as Patrick was doing a remote view. I was having to send him back to um, Atlantis and I was luckily watching the sky and, yes. I, was crap. and I was like, yeah, look at this, look at this. So I tried to connect with it. It didn't get much connection. So I think it might've been unmanned, but I'm not sure. And uh, right after that was the Starlink. So later on that night, a woman came to me and I said, oh my God, I said, it was a Karendi craft. Which yes. would make sense because they have a base in Massachusetts. So, um, yeah, I think it, I think for people who are curious um, in our area, in the New England area, the Karendi is probably going to be a, a main contact for you. Fabulous, fabulous, really good. See the synchronicities. You know, I had no idea you knew anything about that. Well, I couldn't when I saw the the planet Karenda, the star. I'm like, oh my, the Karendi. <laughs> I'm like, I know yes. the Karendi. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, one in a million fabulous. that this guy would have. You know, there's so many people up there. You know, that live up there. That to to have a you know an imme almost immediate connection with someone that um, ha had this very close contact before all the trouble started to happen, yeah. Yes. But we'll, we'll send that. We'll put that link um, to the website for everyone to really enjoy these. Um, you know, God, fantastic information. Um, definitely. Wonderful. It's really good. Uh, I, I know Bob's still in contact with his his visitor friends, although he's been very very quiet. He hasn't had a lot of uh, activity. That would be coming up, but still, these contactees can work very quietly and still working with their star friends. Yeah, yeah. Well, they had Sometimes to, they had to, not to draw careful. a lot of attention. They had to be careful when, um, you know, they had to be very careful once the um, technology for the how should we say it um, difficult people here on Earth. <laughs> became, yes, yeah. uh, Became more prevalent where it was life threatening uh, for them to be seen here. Um, so that you know, they 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 basically. I mean, the benevolent extraterrestrials were the the bad guys, basically. You know. Yes. So it, it was it. You know, we, we are, we've been at war now for quite some time. So <laughs> they had to, they have to keep a low profile. So. Well, well, we surely we surely need protection here. We really do. Well, you we know. Had, we we need well. We definitely had to have it. You know, for many reasons because um you know basically Earth became a, a galactic threat. <laughs> And it was meant, what's nice about that is uh, for those people who are doing research on this, the history of us becoming this very dangerous um, hot, hot spot, you know, the, the center of uh, galactic interest was focused on planet Earth um, because we were very negative um, and dangerous. We, we didn't have the sophistication spiritually uh, or whatever you want to call it, mature. I call it maturity, you know, especially yeah. when it's done to a three year old. Um, just, people, many of these negative humans just couldn't control themselves, and their main goal was to destroy everything. And um, that had to be, you know, uh, addressed. <laughs> addressed. So it's nice for those people who are who, who are doing the research in the development of this war that has been happening here on Earth and is now, thankfully, you know, uh, almost finished. They can read what the Karendi people have written to Bob. Yes. During that time period, people I think it was in the 80s, late 70s, 80s, when things were really yeah. moving and grooving. And um, they do explain to him. And and, and it actually, uh, Bob himself was chipped and part of the military. Really? The, yes. Yes. He actually was like, like a star seat. Wow. Um, here. And they had given him a um, a circuit, a, you know, a chip in the brain that he would be a contact. So yes. he had to be part of the military. Um now I can say that because, you know, it's not going to be a lot of things. Um, but definitely, this was um, no, this was so dangerous. <laughs> what happened here on Earth is just, um, for those, again, I can't stress enough, for those people interested in learning more about that, direct from the horse's mouth, because I know these Karendi people love to do all their little sayings. Um, yeah, 
go through this website that we're going to put on there in the bottom and, and you'll find quite a bit of uh, oh, this section after section, half chapter after chapter concerning the war on earth. Well, thank you for the, all that information as well, Andrea. It's yes, again, all of us have pieces of the puzzle and we're all putting our pieces up on the table so that they could be viewed. And it's part of a magnificent, uh, mosaic or a majestic uh, tapestry that when it's all woven, we'll be able to see everything in clarity. I, I think it's amazing when everybody comes together because I think Evan, I know no one, I know on Walk Drive, that's many people, we don't, we have had Evan on, on, on potentials, but I believe um, he's had some contact as well, but then different people come together and, and they, they, you can kind of fit, that happens to me all the time because I'm, I'm a, you know, as an academic, I want to verify everything. You know? Sure. So um, that you just, when you connect with different people, things that you've seen, and I and, and you had showed um, those discs that were the Akashic Record discs. Which yes. blew my mind because that's what I was handed in the Akashic Record discs. So I was like, you, you, you just question, you don't question yourself, I guess the wrong question. You, you, you wonder when you have an experience um, where it sits. And then when you can have evidence that verifies or helps to yes. expand what the experience really was, then, then you're able to kind of put a story together. So it's um, very nice. Andrea, uh, other than having known Roberta and how she read the Akashic Records, the other people I've spoken to during the course of my life, you're the only other one that ever mentioned about the discs. Really? Yep. No one else has ever mentioned to me that they've seen discs that were basically the, uh, the source of the information for the reading. It was actually, it was in my house on the Pleiades. So I have a house on ERA. Um, yes. And it was actually in the kitchen of my house. Um, of course, I, I didn't know what my, so my future son was the one that showed me the, the disc. He yes. took me and he was rummaging. <laughs> and it was a pretty clean house. I was, it's a small, but clean house. But he was going through it. And I'm just like, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to show me? Then he hands me this this disc about, just like about like this big. Yes. Uh, and it was strange. Cause you're like, what what is this? You know? You knew there was something important in it, obviously, but I didn't quite know what it was. And, and then, it, then that's when he told me, his mom, you have to remember. And he handed me the disc. And then when you showed me those things on the Akashic Hall, the, the Hall of Records for the Akashic Records, I was like, well, my God, <laughs> that's what I was handed. You know, it's just, yes. can't make any Other people who do read the Akashic Records, I've never heard them say what the sources of the information that they're being given. Yeah, King, my, my Akashic record was read by an extraterrestrial man from the Pleiades. Um, he works with the Galactic Federation. Yes. He's not a human. Oh, no, he's not a humanoid. He's a type of insectoid. But um, he does these readings. And generally what he does is he pulls up a holograph. Okay. So that he'll you sit with him and he pulls up a holograph. But it probably pulls up from one of those discs. Okay. Now, did you say you had received something or partial information from Abu Kashkar? Or you had tried to reach out to him? Yes, he came to me. He came to me and he came to Evan. He showed us, and I, and I one of the pictures, actually, I think you can pull it up. Um, you probably it may want to see the series on these records. It's the one where they show the pedestal? Yes. So, um, yeah, he came to me. It's un, It was unusual. He, he struck out because I never see them with a beard. And that was my question. Yes. <laughs> I never see them with a beard. So this this older man with the white beard came to me. Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. This, yeah, this he, he, uh, we went journeying together, and he took me on this planet that's an abandoned, it's a beat up abandoned planet, and it's all red, and it was kind of dusty and had hard red rocks. And he then walked me into this abandoned what we, what we now know must have been a hall of records. So there's all collapsing, and there was this pedestal there. In the center, and he, and he wipes the sand off. his very, I mean, I don't know who knows how old this thing was. Um, it was like it looked like a war zone had happened there or something, just just dec decimation. And um, he had this pedestal, and he wiped off. On top of it was like a thick piece of glass, square glass. He wiped that off, and then it lit up. And there was all these. The one that I showed you, Frank, they reminded me of of Ethiopian glyphs. Yes, so all lit up on this and I, of course I can't read that. Um, so I, I, <laughs> it, that's what that's what all came up across the screen. And then um, and that's then, actually similar one, but there's one where they have, that's the man I met um, with the with the white, the beard and the white hair. Um, he was wearing different clothes then, but. Yes. You know, Linda, like, there's uh, also another image of him standing. There's another image that Linda should have of him standing. We I'll can always that. do another one too if we can't find it. But I'll he's at a table that, and that's exactly what the table looked like, except it was made out of red sand, like a red stone, but not like sandstone, yeah. like hard stone. Yeah. Um, and then of course, Evan, 
That's it. There it is. That's yeah. But this was like that, but made out of like a red stone and was flat because it was very ancient. So it was very ancient technology um, and it was glass. Yes. So when Evan went to it there, I'm mean, obviously it wasn't doing so well, you know, it was, it was not a very good, this, this, this technology was hurting. Um, Evan was able to get underneath it and, and, and Abu Kesh was, was there with Evan as well. And Evan yes. was able to get underneath it and he's trying to fix it because Evan, Evan's, I say Evan's like MacGyver. Um, and it started to speak to him, but again, he couldn't understand what was happening. And it's, it's um, but this thing was responding. And um, honestly, we think it might be Mars. How about that? Wow. That's my guess. I mean, it's a red, we're thinking, where is this planet? Where is this a red planet? It's like, I, I think it was Mars. And as you know, as we all know, of course, Mars is being terraformed right now. Um, so yes. that would make sense that then he would show me this destroyed Hall of Records. Because there's quite a bit of ruins on Mars. And I don't think people understand that. And I tell my yeah. students, I said, you can't believe what you see. Don't believe what you're being shown. They're only uh -huh. showing you a sliver. I said, this is like somebody walking into the Sahara Desert on Earth, showing you the Sahara Desert and telling you this is Earth. It's yes. not it's just a slice of Earth. You're not seeing an entire planet. Right. And uh, Mars was a, was a great civilization. So it, it, it's very, very possible that that's where we were taken. And it, it makes sense because Mars is being terraformed. So... It's interesting. If you could return to that other uh, slide, uh, Linda, uh, I wanted to make a comment. The one where Abu Kashkar is standing. Yes. Notice how lovely that ceiling is. I was going to say that. Yeah, what the? <laughs> the ceiling, there's no ceiling there. That just opens to the outside oh. sky. I was what? wondering about that. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? And the other image that you had with the blue background and the man with the white beard, that was one of Roberta's uh, teachers. His name is uh, Master Sana, S-A-N-A. -A. Oh, okay. He, he, does, okay. he has nothing to do with Abu Kashkar, but he was a teacher <laughs> who would come to Roberta. Yes. Oh, okay. so, yeah, no, th th this, it was not him that I meant that. It was, it was this man. It was Abu Kashkar that I meant, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I just wanted to differentiate. But... Master Santa was an incredible teacher for Roberta, and he's the one who taught her how to read the Akashic records and um, brought her into contact with Abu Kashkar. And from what I understand, the name Abu Kashkar is not a name as we would call a name here on Earth. It's more like a title. Mm -hmm. So he serves this role for a certain period of time, and then someone else has that responsibility, and they go by the name of Abu Kashkar, but it's a different individual. It's like a title. Right. Do they say There's what? Another, go ahead. Kind of like Inky, and, and Inky is a title. Like, right. Well, I was going to say one of the illustrations in the PDF I sent you, it shows uh, an image like this with Abu Kashkar standing, and in the background, there's a dolphin. And the dolphin image uh, is because they are very linked with us spiritually, and they're going to help elevate our awareness and consciousness. And Linda, I had said this to Andrea. There's a woman I know in California who's a, a contactee, and she's working with individuals who look like us. And they asked her to move from California to Hawaii, that they were going to be guiding her and working with dolphins and whales, that the uh, vibrations and sounds that dolphins and whales make are going to be uh, uh, beneficial to us in nudging awareness and consciousness for us to be more receptive to what our, our, our origins are. Well, that makes sense because they have a, a frequency that's like a very high frequency. Yes. And I think I sent this to Andrea two days ago. Tell me if you've received it, Andrea. The uh, NASA re revealed information that uh, Venus is loaded with oxygen. There's oxygen all over Venus. And we've no. been told. You've yeah. That the, I, I, send, I think I sent you a text. If not, I'll send it to you again. No, maybe I'll but they, admitted, they said Venus, there's oxygen all over Venus. And, you know, it's a sister planet of Earth. I mean, the diameter of Earth and Venus is almost identical. Yep. And everybody shifts attention to Mars when, you know, there's plenty of life on Venus. Well, there's a lot of life. <laughs> right, right, right. It's, there's plenty of life everywhere. Nobody ever really talks about. Yeah. But, anyway, but it's like it's like a, a deflection, you know. Well, look at Mars. Is. But don't look at Venus. Don't look at Venus. Look at Mars. Right. 
And the reason they're the reason they're showing you Mars is that there's nothing there. There's oh, there's nothing there. You know, that's the whole point of keep. They just they're just still telling the same story. But I think it's you know people are sick yeah. of the broken record at this point. So. It's an old story. <laughs> it's an old story. Don't look behind the curtain. <laughs> right. <laughs> We live in astounding times and it's so joyful to be able to share this information with people who are open and receptive. And every day presents us with a new revelation, uh, another level of awareness as to what truth really is. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing all of that with us, Frank. Thank and you, it's my, my pleasure and a joy. And again, I'm, I'm, sorry that, I'm sorry I couldn't be together with you on Tuesday, but if uh, ne next Tuesday works for you or next Wednesday, you just let me know. Absolutely, yes. All works better for your great. schedule. You like I, told Andrea, I told Andrea I wanted to present a story about Callie and her inner earth initiation and yes. what an extraordinary woman she is. And wow. uh, I got—I was privileged to know her for 45 years of my life, the same with uh, Roberta. And they both were great teachers to me in their own individual ways. And they were all about service. They were all about service. And, you know, they don't need to draw attention to themselves. You do the work quietly and... What you need is given to you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, that's so true. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's always a let, it, let everything just happen. We should let everything Yes. Happen. Yeah. And if any questions come through, uh, Linda, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer any questions that folks may have about yes. anything that I've shared. Uh, again, uh, these are just, um, what can I say? These are like uh, mile markers along the way of individuals I've met and experiences, and they stay with you because. They're meant to touch us and to remind us of who we are and what it is that we're about and that our origins are from not here. You know, we're all visitors here. We're all visitors. Yes. And also, um, anybody has any questions, please put them in the comments um, of this video and we will get back to you. Um, you know, I can have uh, Frank answer them in the next uh, video if possible. Or Linda, um, if you, you could provide them with my email address oh, and okay. I'd be happy to. To correspond with them as well oh well that's that's amazing thank you frank yeah i can do that i'll put that in the description okay for sure. thank and you so very much onward and upward yes, yes if anybody knows how to track anybody knows and he has any connection with those photographs um from hatan's planet um maybe they can you know if they're watching this video or have access to this video um maybe they can yes. send us an email as well right. andrea will be one more synchronicity andrea exactly exactly yeah. <laughs> Thanks again, and continue being brilliant, dear one. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank See you upstairs. Friend. See you upstairs. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.